Aujourd'hui, nous sommes réunis pour apporter notre soutien aux hommes et aux femmes. Je rappelle qu'il y a 3400, dont 1000 femmes, qui sont enfermées dans des conditions indignes en Irak, dans les camps d'Ashraf et Liberty Camp. Après de nombreuses condamnations internationales et les réfugiés transformés, transférés vers un nouveau camp du nom poétique de Liberty, dans l'attente d'être accueillis vers leur pays tiers. Mais en fait, Liberty est une véritable prison, un vrai camp de concentration, impossible de sortir du camp, aucune liberté. Impossible de recevoir la moindre visite famille, avocat, journaliste. On a construit un mur de 4 mètres de hauteur du camp. Les édifices sont gardés en permanence par des militaires fortement armés. Ils sont surveillés par des caméras et des écoutes électroniques. Ils n'ont aucune vie privée possible. Difficulté quotidienne pour avoir de l'eau, de l'électricité et des carburants. Aujourd'hui, je veux avec vous dire que cela suffit. I'm not only humbled and very excited to be here, but I'm also very angry. And one of the reasons that I'm angry is because I'm disturbed at the failure of my own government and that of the United Nations to uphold their obligations that they made to the people of Camp Ashraf. They are practically supporting forcible eviction of people from their homes, and it's absolutely shameful. Perhaps the greater injustice is that the residents are being blamed for not cooperating enough. Can you imagine having to leave Ashraf and going to Camp Liberty and not being able to take one of those beautiful instruments with you and you're not cooperating enough? You don't have water to drink, nothing to wash your clothing. You have cameras watching you 24-7. You have armed guards patrolling you. You can't even go get anything to eat without having to pass through armed Iraqi guards. It is time for my government to adopt a new approach. It is also time for the UN to be on the side of the victims and not the Iraqi government. The right thing to do is to remove the armed police to outside the camp, to remove the surveillance cameras. It is time to respect the rights of the residents of Ashraf. Well, I would like to express my solidarity with the residents of Ashraf. I would also like to praise Mrs. Rajavi for bringing the voice of those residents, the voice of women in Ashraf, and indeed the voice of the Iranian people in their struggle for democracy, freedom, and gender equality. Aujourd'hui, les femmes d'Ashraf et de Liberty représentent un Iran nouveau qu'il faut soutenir, un Iran de la résistance au Mollah. Ashraf, il faut le rappeler, Ashraf, c'est l'expérience de trois décennies de lutte des femmes de la résistance iranienne. Aujourd'hui, je veux dire bien sûr un mot essentiel aux femmes d'Ashraf. Je veux les remercier profondément de se battre. Mais revenons à la situation actuelle au camp Liberty, qui porte si mal son nom. C'est un exemple remarquable de ce que les femmes sont en train de faire. 
en dépit de toutes les difficultés qui les attendent, malgré le fait qu'elles savaient qu'elles seraient privées de tout jusqu'à leur intimité. Elles ont osé prendre le risque d'aller de l'avant vers la nouvelle épreuve que constitue ce camp Liberty. Like others here, I am here because I've learned of the plight of a thousand brave women that you are all here to support and remember the lives of those who are tributed in the exhibition outside today. Women across the world must work together to secure a safer world. Ashraf symbolizes that need. Today, I also want to bring a special tribute to the brave people in Ashraf and in Camp Liberty. Among them are a thousand vanguard women who in recent years have tolerated the most unbearable pressures by the regime of Iran and its allies in the Iraqi government. Despite being deprived of the most basic provisions like water, medicines and medical treatment, despite the injury, despite the loss of lives, you stand firm in your beliefs of freedom and democracy. You are an example and therefore a source of hope and motivation for millions of oppressed women inside Iran and the rest of the world. It is time for the head of the UN mission in Iraq, Mr. Martin Kobler, to finally speak out very loud and to use his powerful position to make the Iraqi government respect minimum assurances for the residents in Camp Liberty. The Law Society is committed to seeking the protection of residents in Ashraf and Liberty and will continue to join with you all in doing so. The Law Society of England and Wales represents over 135,000 lawyers and in the last two years over half of those young lawyers qualifying are women. As Chair of our Human Rights Committee I bring you our greetings and solid commitment to support the Ashraf residents and in particular the 1,000 courageous women of Ashraf and support for the women of Iran. In defense of human rights, the Law Society raises areas of concern wherever we believe we can make a difference. And so we have done so in many pub public platforms in respect of freedom for and protection for the residents of Ashraf. The Law Society is extremely concerned about the removal to Camp Liberty. We have seen the photos and read the accounts about the new camp. Liberty is a misnomer. It has nothing to do with liberty. It is built as a prison camp, as we have all been referring to. It's vital that there are minimum insurances given and implemented for the safety of Ashraf residents and the immediate improvement to be made in the miserable conditions which constitute a risk to the health of all residents. The majority of the Canadian Parliament, which I used to represent until recently, has supported the Mujahideen. But let us call on UNAMI and the Special Representative of the UN, Secretary General and the US Secretary of State to actively defend the human rights and ensure the dignity of Liberty residents. As women, we call on them to bring the Iraqi authorities to recognize that the current situation is intolerable for women in Liberty, for men also, by the way. Police and cameras must be removed from the camp. Women should enjoy their privacy and their right to a decent life in Liberty until they're allowed to leave Iraq Madame Rajavi, allow me once again this year to express gratitude for your leadership in seeking a peaceful solution and a democratic solution to again this crisis. Given the unacceptable behavior of the Iraqi government and the failure of the United Nations and the United States to uphold their obligations, 
Were it not for your leadership, Madame Rajavi, we would by now, I'm sure, have had to face another humanitarian catastrophe.